nature, looking to nature. Nature is the only model we have for regenerative. So I think we need to look to nature, look to nature's behaviours, structures, systems, uh, because it's a rich repository of ideas on how you can be regenerative. And welcome to the studio, Nick Jeffries from the Emma Carr Foundation. What I always, literally always say about you, Nick, is you've forgotten more about the circular economy than I'll ever know. And indeed, you were involved in producing the film we just watched. Yes, it was a real, and thanks, Seb, for that intro. It was a real eye-opening film to be involved with. I mean, I mean, who could imagine, like, one crop is responsible for more emissions than the entire aviation industry? I mean, it's just mind-blowing. It is a startling surprising number um, and I guess the you know what that film is about is the solutions like a vision for regenerative rice farm implementation in a specific context my question and I guess maybe the audience question is what would it take to replicate or scale up what we saw in that film well I think that's a very important question yeah if we want to get from the four percent that we're at the moment four percent of rice growing land is grown in this regenerative way up to about 25 percent or more uh, where we can make a meaningful contribution to the climate emergency, I think there's three things that we need to, uh, to look at. Firstly, um, more support for farmers. So by that I mean more training, um, uh, financial support to buy equipment. As you saw from the film, there's certain equipment that you need um, for the, the spacing of the seedlings and, and, and the, wa the, the water control. Um, secondly, there's a role for policy or government so there's 11 countries, including Vietnam, Senegal, um, and, 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 and other countries, they actually have SRI as part of their NDCs. What's an NDC? Just for anyone, not me obviously, but anyone who might not know that term. Okay, well, NDC stands for Nationally Determined Contributions, and it is the specific plans that each country has to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. And the third and last is, I think there's a role for businesses. So um, how can brands, how can retailers, how can bulk ingredient buyers, how can they follow the example of Lotus and engage their supply chain, change their procurement practices and send out a demand signal to the farmers, the rice farmers of the world to produce rice in this way. So training and support for farmers who are trying to farm in this way, the right policy context and and kind of interestingly, an example that film was really driving at, the role that businesses, big buyers of food can play in really like starting to get the system moving. Indeed, yes. Yeah, thanks so much, Nick. Great film. Now, I'd like to challenge you, if I may, with three burning questions that we constantly do have coming into the show. And your first one is, what is regenerative? What is regenerative? All right, well, for me, regenerative means moving from doing less harm to actually trying to have a positive impact on the environment and society. So that's the first uh, thing. The second is about putting life at the centre of all decisions. So I'm not talking about all decisions, I'm talking about business decisions, financial investment decisions, policy decisions, and, and things like urban planning decisions. So yeah, putting life at the centre. And then finally, I guess, nature, looking to nature. Nature is the only model we have for regenerative. So I think we need to look to nature, look to nature's behaviours, structures, systems, uh, because it's a rich repository of ideas on how you can be regenerative. I like that you're um, going with powers of three, Nick. You obviously took the same Communication 101 <laughs> seminar that I did. Um, and, and it makes my job really easier in recapping. So <laughs> it's more good, not less bad, life at the centre and inspiration from nature. It's, it's kind of worked for a while, so we might be able to learn something from it. Nice one, guys. Now for the biggie, Nick. How does the circular economy challenge climate change? All right. Oh, tricky question. OK. Well, I'm afraid we're going to go for two here. There's two. The two parts, the challenges to climate change. There is a renewable energy. Like We need more renewable energy. That's sort of half the challenge. But the other half is the bits which renewable energy can't solve, and that's the materials. Yeah, the material challenge. And circular economy is a framework for making more effective use of our materials by sharing, by having new business models, by recycling, by using renewable or biomaterials. And so, yeah, so, but also we can go beyond that because circular economy is also about regenerating nature or regenerative production. And it is possible to 
grow food and fibres and fuel in a way that actually draws carbon down from the atmosphere rather than at the moment it emits it. So I think circular economy and the climate change are inextricably linked because there is no zero or low carbon future without the circular economy. And that split that you mentioned comes from a publication that you contributed to called Completing the Picture, where it says that 45% is materials, 55% is renewable energy. And what always strikes me about that is it says, well, even if we manage to get to 100% renewable energy, which is a huge feat in itself, that would still only take tackle 55% of the problem, which is not enough to do to make the kind of progress and towards two degrees or whatever the targets are on greenhouse gas emissions now. Finally, what are a couple of examples of circular economy innovation you've seen recently that you think are really great? Well, what I love, uh, so solution projects, companies, initiatives, materials, whatever, that are circular and solve lots of different challenges in one elegant way. So climate challenges, biodiversity challenges, societal challenges. And the SRA, SRI that we, we, we just watched, that's a good example. But to give you an ocean, example from the, from the ocean, so they all, from, from the US, it's a company called Greenwave, and what they promote and, dem and, and, and demonstrate is a system of ocean farming called regenerative ocean farming. And what essentially are, they are these structures that are sort of 3D, they sort of are slightly below the surface of the, of the water, and they're made of things like ropes and baskets. And you can grow all types of marine products, you know, shellfish, seaweed, kelp. And so, and they're very, very uh, like uh, productive. And you can use these products for food, fertilizers, biomaterials. But also they sequester carbon because kelp and other marine plants are really, really good at sequestering carbon. Uh, they create these lovely marine ecosystems. They regenerate the oceans. Like our oceans have really suffered a little bit in, in the last few years, but they have a very good at regenerating marine ecosystems. They help re reduce storm surges. They create jobs. Basically, there's a, a multitude of benefits. And so, yeah, that would be my one. Green wave from the US. And I think that's got to be one of my favourites as well. Thanks so much for that, Nick.